Hi, my name is Dr. Edward Duran, and I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about adenomyosis. So, to understand adenomyosis, I think it's important to understand two other gynecologic conditions. Uh, one is endometriosis, and the other one is fibroids or myomas. So, first, we're going to talk a little bit about endometriosis. So, endometriosis occurs in 14% of reproductive age women, but it can occur in as many as 65% of women that have infertility. So it is much more prevalent in the infertility community. What endometriosis is, is when you have the lining of the uterus growing outside of the uterine cavity. So the endometrium is the lining that is shed every month when patients do not, or do not achieve a pregnancy and have a period. That lining, if it is either um, backed up through the fallopian tube, lands in the pelvis and grows, that is what endometriosis is, and it is uh, very uh, toxic and can lead to scar tissue formation, it can damage egg quality, and it can affect uh, embryo implantation in the uterus. So the important thing to understand regarding endometriosis is it's the lining of the uterus growing outside of the endometrial cavity or the uterine cavity. Fibroids or myomas are when you have a single cell of uh, the myometrium or the muscle cell in the uterus that grows and expands and it can um, form a, a, a tumor mass that's often and usually benign but it impairs blood flow and can contribute to painful, heavy periods, miscarriage, and infertility. And what this is is where you have a mass, a benign tumor mass of muscle cells growing in the wall of the uterus. So how they're related is adenomyosis is where you have endometrial cells or the lining of the uterus and that's usually inside the uterine cavity those cells now start to grow in the muscle wall. So in the body of the uterus, in the muscle wall, you have growth of these endometrial cells. And what happens is they're hormonally responsive to estrogen. So just like you, the lining of the uterus thickens up during your menstrual cycle and is shed at the end of the cycle, this area inside of the uterine wall will form endometrial cells that expand and you can often find dark chocolate nest of cells in the muscle wall. What that means is that the uterus expands in size and what happens, adenomyosis impairs blood flow to the endometrium where the embryo implants. So similarly to the way a fibroid or a myoma would impair blood flow, adenomyosis impairs blood flow because it is not uh, muscle cells, it's actually in the metrium growing within the wall of the uterus. It can cause the uterus to get large, it can cause painful, heavy periods. And what we see in these patients is that most of the time adenomyosis is a diagnosis that's only found at the time of hysterectomy by a pathologist when they cut the uterus open and they see this. Uh, what I've been doing for many years is actually resecting the adenomyosis with a minimally invasive robotic surgical approach where you can get a lot of the mass of the endometrial mixed with the muscle. You can resect that or remove that from the muscle wall, restoring the uterus to a much more normal, smaller size with better blood flow to the endometrium. So that's one way of helping patients that have poor reproductive outcomes, uh, infertility, miscarriage because of poor blood flow in the uterus. And by resecting the, uh, the adenomyosis and rebuilding uh, the uterus, these patients after two to three months of healing can go on to achieve a pregnancy either through fertility treatments or naturally and have a much better outcome because you've restored normal blood flow to the endometrium.